Hi, I'm Dr. Andy Thompson. This is COVID-19 update, April 22nd, 2020. All data as of 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to account for reporting. All of our videos can be found on roominfo.com slash blog. Current trajectories are really the same story here. United States is now over 850,000 cases. It will be soon hitting a million. Over 2.6 million cases worldwide. Here are the reported cases per million population. You can see here Canada and Germany are still doing well and flattening versus the other countries. Here are the percentage of deaths. Highest in the United Kingdom at 13.56%, lowest in Germany at 3.53%. Here are the deaths. The top number here is the uh, today, and the bottom numbers are the uh, subsequent days. Take-home points. Deaths are now about in half in Italy and Spain. They used to be over eight or 900, if you remember. Now they're down to about 400. France is also falling. United Kingdom, United States, Canada, and Germany are still chugging along, though. Here are the deaths per million population. I think Canada right now is at a decision point whether it's going to start trending upwards with the United States or flatten off like Germany. Estimated reproduction numbers, same story here. Everybody's under one. Let's zoom in, though, on where Canada is. And there's Italy, Spain, Germany, France, United Kingdom, United States, and Canada. Now, Canada is somewhat flat in terms of its reproduction number over seven days. We'll have to keep an eye on this. New cases per day, though. Everybody's under one, so everybody's on this side of the curve. Here are the new cases per day. Italy, Spain, Germany, all flattening. France, United Kingdom, United States, and Canada underneath everybody. Here are the daily deaths. Italy, Spain, Germany, France, the United Kingdom, United States, and Canada, roughly in line with Germany. Here are the new cases per day in Canada. Today we had 1,768. And the black line on the graph there is a seven-day rolling average. You can see that that rolling average is actually increasing a little bit. Let's look at new deaths per day in Canada. Again, we had 140 deaths today, and the black line is a seven-day rolling average. And you can see that is also increasing a little bit in terms of deaths. Here are the provincial cases of COVID-19. There's Canada, Alberta, British Columbia. You'll see Alberta starting to increase and deviate a little bit from British Columbia. There's Ontario, and there's Quebec uh, with over 20,000 now. Here are the other provinces. Again, everybody's flattened out except for Nova Scotia, who continues to rise. Here are the cumulative deaths in Canada, almost at 2,000 now. Alberta, British Columbia, Ontario, and Quebec, who is now separated from Ontario and growing faster than Ontario. So let's talk about the spread of COVID-19. If you read the literature, you'll read that one person on average can infect about two or three others. But really, that's not the way it works. The way it works is one person might infect another person, maybe no people, and another person might infect a lot of people. And this is called the 80-20 rule. And what that means is 20% of infected individuals are responsible for 80% of the spread of this virus. And it's important to remember that. Because there's these things called super spreading events. So these are places and events where the virus spreads very rapidly. And again, it's all centered around DMC, density, movement, and confinement. Density means you've got a large concentration of a number of individuals, such as a meeting or a hospital or a public gathering. Movement is the people are moving around in this environment, touching things, touching people. And they're confined to a certain space. And that sets up an environment for the virus to spread. So... There's some factors that play a role in how the virus spreads in these environments. First of all, how much virus there is in the environment and how resilient the virus is, how well it lives on surfaces. The reservoir or the host, the person with the virus that comes, how symptomatic they are okay, and how infectious they are when they come. Are they at the tail end of their infection or are they just ramping up and have a lot of viral RNA? The environment, what's the density? How many people are there? How confined are you? 
Are there infection control measures in place? Are there places to wash your hand? Are there hand sanitizer stations? And do people actually do this? And finally, the behavior of people. Social customs. Is everybody shaking hands and touching each other? Are people adherence to public health and hygiene? So here's some examples of super spreading environments. Things are confined spaces. Well, there's lots of people, lots of touching, and a lack of hygiene. And some examples you might think of are churches, schools, cruise ships, health clubs, shared eating environments, nursing homes, prisons, and healthcare facilities. There's been a study in Japan that's shown that the odds that a primary case transmitted COVID-19 in a closed environment was almost 19 times greater compared to an open air environment. That's very significant. So we can open our country using low risk environments to start. So think about things like stores, big grocery stores, where you can social distance, home improvement stores, big ones where you can hold social distance, and car dealerships are generally large as well, as long as you're not going for test drives. Think about sports and leisure activities, like golf courses, where you can social distance as long as you don't get together in the clubhouse afterwards. Tennis courts, soccer fields for practice where you can distance, hockey arenas where you can come dress to the arena, put your skates on, go on the ice, but as long as you're social, you're distanced from other people. And then parks and trails, as long as people aren't coughing on each other as they go by each other. So when you go to the environment and things are opened up, you wanna have a little checklist you use, okay? Think about it. Am I able to social distance in this environment? Am I able to adhere to proper hygiene? Are there hand washing stations? Are there hand sanitizer stations around? Right? Are other individuals respectful when I'm there? Okay, let's look at some comparisons now of Canada with the United States in terms of cases and deaths per million, and also with the rest of the world in terms of cases and deaths per million. And then we'll look at what are the top 10 worst places on earth currently, that we know of anyways, for COVID-19. So how does Canada compare with the United States? Well, we're doing pretty well. We're right in the middle of about 1,000 cases per million population. Compared with some of the big states in the U.S., such as New York and New Jersey and Massachusetts, they're all much higher than us. What about deaths per million population? Well, really the same story here. We're right in the middle there as well. We're not even close to the big states like New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. How do we compare to the rest of the world? Well, there you go. We're doing pretty well. Everybody wants to know about Sweden. Sweden is worse than Canada in terms of cases per million population. Norway's worse. Austria's worse. And they're masking all the time. Germany's worse. United Kingdom's worse. The Netherlands' worse. Look at Belgium. Belgium's really had a, a big outbreak. They're not doing well either. We're not as good as Australia or Japan or the Czech Republic. What about in terms of deaths? Again, we're doing really well. Okay, we're not as good as, just, as Australia or Japan, but we're certainly a whole lot better than Sweden, better than the United States on average, and better than most of the other countries such as Belgium, Spain, Italy, France, United Kingdom. Okay, where are the top 10 worst places on earth for COVID-19 in terms of deaths per million population? Number 10 is Michigan, 283 deaths per million. Number 9, Louisiana, 316 deaths per million. Number 8, Massachusetts. 319 deaths per million. Number seven, France, 327 deaths per million. Number six, Italy, 415 deaths per million. Number five, Connecticut, 431 deaths per million. Number four, Spain, 464 deaths per million. Number three, Belgium, 540 deaths per million. Number two, New Jersey at 570 deaths per million. And number one, New York, 1,037 deaths deaths per million. If you notice, six of the top 10 places here are states within the United States of America. So I want to tell all Canadians to hold the line. We're actually doing pretty well on the grand scheme of things. Our numbers and our deaths are still growing a little bit looking at that seven day rolling average. So we need to keep holding that line, folks. Again, go to Collins Clothiers. Under Canada Strong, get one of these awesome hoodies or t-shirts to support small businesses of frontline workers. Go to physiotherapyroom.com, talk to Bill. Get one of these great masks that you can use to protect others when you're out in uh, public. Remember, do your part, flatten that curve, folks. Stay home, stay safe, and please, please, save lives.